Hey, Dr. Christensen here with you. If you've ever been told your thyroid labs are normal, but you don't feel right, it may not be how much hormone is there. It might be how your body is using the hormone. Here's the thing. We hear a lot about T4, T3, these big ones. In all honesty, there are dozens of different biologically active thyroid hormones. These are called thyronamines. And when you're healthy, your body converts these in all sorts of ways, in your blood and in your different tissues. So often, if you're not feeling your best, the problem is things aren't being converted properly. And oftentimes, people are trying to, trying to chase different medication, more medication, more extreme diet, and they may have exactly what they need, but they're just not utilizing it properly. So let's talk more about conversion, why this matters, and how you can go about helping this with safe nutraceuticals. So just for some basics, the active hormones we hear the most about are T4 and T3. Now, the four and three are simply numbers of iodine atoms attached onto a modified protein called thyroglobulin, which is made out of tyrosine. And it's not just four and three. There's also two, which is biologically active. There's regular, three, uh, regular T3 and reverse T3. And past that, a lot more that we know about that are used in different tissues, but are not things we can measure directly. Now, how this conversion happens is different based upon your genetics, based upon how much iodine you're ingesting, and it also happens differently within different parts of your body. So your liver, your brain, your gut, even fat tissue. These things can all be affected by stressors, inflammation, any kinds of illness, and they can change all of that. We can also see issues when someone is taking medication. Now, most thyroid medication is primarily T4, and that's actually okay, but there are times to where if someone's getting way too much T4, or if they're taking medication they don't need, their body may resist that. And part of the way the body resists that is by making inactive hormones much more preferentially, meaning a lot of reverse T3. And that can change the ratios of reverse T3 to T3 to T4. So it can come from taking the wrong amount of medication, the wrong type of medication, or taking medicine you don't need at all. And that's one of the biggest paradoxes. But when, when T3 is overshadowed by other hormones, you can feel hypothyroid, you know, more fatigue, more fogginess, more weight struggles, even when the labs look fine. Now, there's also one called T2, and this one is super important. So T2 is one that has the most direct effects upon how your body makes energy, and how your liver burns fat. You know, how your liver can actually burn fat effectively for fuel. And if you're taking medication, medication won't contain T2 with the exception of natural desiccated thyroid. But your body can still make that. Now, T2, there are some quasi-legal T2 supplements. They're not totally legal. We don't know how much T2 people should take. We know that T2 does help, but when it's taken in nutrient form, as in T2 supplements or T2 creams, there have been human studies done on this. And it's been shown that if you take enough to help with your metabolism, you're probably going to get cardiac damage. And that's why I don't sell a T2 supplement. But I do want your body to make T2 better by itself. And this is the thing. Nutraceuticals can help with all of these conversion pathways. So T4 to T3, uh, T3 to T2, T4 to reverse T3, reverse T3 to T2. Funny thing, reverse T3 is often talked about as the bad guy. It's not. If there's way too much of it, that's a sign that something is wrong. But reverse T3 is not the problem, it's just a symptom. We actually need reverse T3 as one of the main sources of T2 in humans, and also it's super important for brain, brain effects. So, Let's talk about how your body does this, which things can help with that, and how you can get to a good balance of thyroid hormones in your system. So one of the biggest first steps is being on an appropriate amount of iodine and not excessive. And here's the wrinkle. So thyroid meds, they contain iodine. So when you're on thyroid meds, you're getting an extra dose. And that stacks on top of what you get from diet, from salt, from supplement, from personal care products, if that total dose is pushing you above 200 micrograms, it's pretty hard to regulate, and your body ends up being more resistant to thyroid hormones. So the first step is really getting into a good iodine window. 
If you're actively trying to correct a thyroid problem, that window is somewhere below 100 micrograms per day from all sources. If you're stable and you just want to keep things working well, that window is between about 50 to 200 micrograms per day. There's a lot to that. This was what I wrote in the Thyroid Reset Diet and lots of other free videos too. So I won't go into that in this one, but please know that regulating iodine is probably your biggest first step. Second step is getting adequate selenium. Now my favorite version of this is selenocysteine. This is one that has been shown to help your conversion to T4 and T3 and also into reverse T3 and T2. Clinical human trials have showed this is effective. This is a safe thing. It's a good thing. Selenium in supplements is appropriate up to about 400 micrograms per day. I don't like that much really, but that's kind of an upper safe limit from all sources. When I formulate products, I consider that people may be on multiple products and I make sure their combined dose won't be above that. But you shouldn't be getting less than 100 micrograms if you're trying to help your conversion or lower antibodies or maintain good thyroid health. And I also suggest having selenium in the diet. It's kind of odd, but supplemental forms and dietary forms do different things, it seems. That's not intuitive, but that's what the best research tells us. You know, have a couple Brazil nuts per day and get between one to 400 micrograms in your micronutrients. Next up for helping conversion, there's good data about vitamin E's being useful. I did say E's. This is kind of a big spectrum of compounds that fall under that. They help the deiodinase enzymes, those are the thyroid converting enzymes, they help them work better when there's oxidative stress. This is really important if there's chronic inflammation or if there's exposure to things like heavy metals like lead or cadmium. There's good data that vitamin E, especially alpha tocopherols, may be useful and may help those things work quite a bit better. Next up is zinc. Now zinc and vitamin E are both ones that are nice to have in baseline micronutrient supplementation, but I like extra amounts for those that may be struggling with poor conversion. So zinc is also part of these enzymes that convert thyroid hormones, but it's also part of activating and forming the TSH and helping the body respond properly to TSH levels. So if zinc is lacking, you may not be making or responding to TSH appropriately. And even though there is a signal to your thyroid, it may not be responded to as well as it should otherwise. Zinc is also a big part of supporting the transcription factors that help with the actual formation of a thyroid hormone within the thyroid follicles. Next up are compounds that help your glucuronidation. They help your body's detox. Now, glucuronidation is how you clear out some of the less needed thyroid hormone metabolites. And the body always has a lot of redundancy built in. You know, most of us can live with one kidney, or most of us can do fine on one lung, or we can donate a chunk of our liver tissue, we can donate blood, and it's similar with thyroid hormones. We normally make more than we need, and a lot of it we eliminate in inactive forms. But sometimes if that elimination doesn't work well, those inactive forms end up bioaccumulating, and they can make your body be resistant to the more active thyroid hormones. Two of the things that help the most with this are D-limonene, and calcium D-glucarate. What these do is these help the phase two liver enzymes that conjugate and eliminate these inactive thyroid hormones. And we've got good human studies showing that they can improve the balance with no drawbacks, no negatives. Another fun ingredient that I've used is elagic acid. This is found in pomegranates and it helps in a couple ways, one of which is it inhibits beta-glucuronidase. Now, this is kind of a double negative because beta-glucuronidase undoes some facets of detoxification. It also helps improve your thyroid hormone receptor activity, and it also helps your adipose tissue respond better to thyroid hormones. Studies have shown that it can help basal metabolic rate and help T3 formation in brown fat. That's the most metabolic, metabolically active fat tissue. Next up is turmeric root, curcumin extracts. There's good evidence that curcumin can support NRF2 activation. What that means is less inflammation, less oxidative stress within thyroid cells. In studies, it's been shown to stabilize T3 and prevent drops of T3 that are caused by inflammatory cytokines. This is especially useful for those with chronic stress or prolonged illnesses. 
and we also have grapeseed extract. This is one of the most powerful antioxidants for general thyroid support. In human studies, markers of inflammation have improved when people are taking thyroid medication, and also they respond more effectively to the same dose. So even if a dose is not perfect, when you're healthy, your body can use, utilize and almost like buffer and amplify the effects of a dose that's low or block the effects of a dose that are excessive. And this is one of the roles of these diiodinase enzymes. And whenever those things are disrupted via oxidative stress, grapeseed extract has been shown to help with this. Now, like a lot of the things that I've made, I simply went through all the human studies on what works to achieve a particular thyroid goal. I took those ingredients and used the amounts in the studies and made those into an active blend. So this is the case for T2, T3 converter. This is simply all the things clinically shown to make a big difference with thyroid hormone conversion and activation. Usage for this is really easy. It's just uh, uh, one, one capsule once daily. And this is taken for an hour before thyroid medications. And there are those to where they can have a harder time absorbing and they may need to take things further away. But these are generally ingredients that are not problematic for medication absorption. Now, as always, when you're changing things with thyroid treatment, you want to talk to your doctor about that and you want to be aware of possible changes that can occur. This is made to be free of hidden iodine, gluten, soy, dairy, artificial colors, flavors, preservatives, GMOs, all of that. This formula is vegan friendly. It is actual gelatin caps. That's the one consideration. I put a lot of thought into veggie caps versus gelatin caps with these products. The only reason I didn't use veggie caps is because they're almost all made out of alginates or carrageenan compounds. And all the ones that I assayed had inappropriate amounts of iodine. So that's why I don't recommend veggie caps for those with thyroid disease, even if they're vegan, because you're going to get a lot of extra iodine in your body and it's going to throw a lot of things off. So one big consideration with the blend, if you're on medication, your levels might change. And generally that's a good thing, but if your levels change in ways to where now the medication is much stronger than it was before, you might need dose reductions. So use this in the conjunction with checking your levels, interacting with your doctor, making adjustments that you might need. But the general intention is for those who need thyroid medication long-term, those who are on a certain kind of medication and it's working well in some ways, but not in others. Honestly, adding in T2, T3 converter is generally a much simpler step than trying to change categories of medication. You know, going from Synthroid to Armour Thyroid or adding in T3. These things are totally appropriate. And when I manage people, there's times in which I will do them as well. But the first step I'm going to take is just make sure your body has the right window of iodine and the right support of nutrients. It's so much simpler to help your body work well by itself than to try to be heavy handed and force it one way or another. When it does, you can feel better even if your levels aren't exactly perfect all the time and they won't be. Thyroid levels always do fluctuate. So the biggest goal I think of is to get it to where you're like a healthy person and to where your body can have some ups and downs, but you still function well. And T3, T2 converter can be a big part of how that happens. All right, Dr. Christensen here. Take great care. We'll talk real soon.